Welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we create a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. So we're clocking in and we're clocking out and we're registering these work items, but we're not really saving them to any kind of backend or a service. So we should make some kind of method to where we can call the account service or a job service or a work service and be able to send these these work items to the service to be saved so that we can view them later. So let's go ahead and create a new service under the services folder. Let's add a new folder and we will call it work. And in here we can create a new interface and we will call this I work service. And now in this work service, we want some kind of way to uh, save our work items um, and return a status. So we can say task and import the using and just bool f is fine as a return type because this will just determine whether it's successful or a failure. And so we can say task bool and then we'll say log work async and this will take in a work item. So we'll import that using as well and we'll just say item. And so this is the method declaration for logging a work item and then we'll make our, our mock account service. So we can right click on the work folder again and add a new class. And this will be mock work service. And now mock work service will implement I work service. And then we'll want to do a quick fix so we can implement the interface. So this should save to some kind of list of work items. So let's make a property. And this will be a list of work items. And we'll just call it items is fine. And then we want to import the using on system collections generic. And then in the constructor, we will initialize our list of work items. And then in our mock service, we'll just go ahead and add the work item to items. So we'll just say items dot add item. And then we'll just return task dot from result and return true. And so this will just simply mock some kind of service that saves our work items. We'll add the work item, we'll return true, and then the consumers of the service can uh, just save work items and be notified of success. So now back in the time clock page model, we want to get a reference to that service. So we'll head back up to the constructor and we can just add it in the constructor. So I work service, and we can just give it a name, work service. And then under the account service, we can say work service equals work service. And then we'll just use the quick fix and it'll add work service under the account service. And we can use quick fix again to import that using. And so now that we have a reference to the work service, when we clock out and we add that work item, we'll make it an actual variable so we can save it to the work service. So we'll say var item equals, and then we'll just cut this out of here and we'll paste it here. So it var item equals the work item that we created. And then we'll pass into the insert method, just item. And now that we have that variable, we can save it to the work service. So uh, let's make our method asynchronous. And then we can await work service dot log work async. And then we can pass in item. And that will save this to our mock service and eventually our backend. And so when we come back to this page from like a new launch, uh, it'll look, we can load all of our work items from that work service. While we just save it to a list that um, stays in memory of the app, when we close the app and reopen the app, we won't have reference to that. That's why it's just a mock service. But we're preparing for a real service by making this mock service in a way that we expect it to work. We'll also want to load our work items when we first get to this page. And so in the initialize async method, under hourly rate, we can get today's work items. So we can just say work items equals await work service dot get today's work async. And then this can be a method that we add to the work service and it can go to the back end, make a query for any work items that have today's date and return them. And it'll return to this page model so we can use it on the page. So let's go ahead and make this method. So we'll copy the name or you can right click and go to a quick fix and you can just generate the method in work service. And we're initializing our work items in the constructor, which we no longer need to do because we're going to initialize it from our work service. So we can just delete that line in the constructor, work items equals new observable collection. We can just delete. And now we'll head over to the iWork service and we see that we have this 
method generated for us. But when we go to the mock work service, we'll have an error because that method isn't implemented yet. So we can go ahead and quick fix to implement the method. And then in our mock service, all we're going to do is return a new observable collection of our items every time. So we can just return task dot from result. And this will be a new observable collection of work items. Um, and then we can pass in a collection in here in the constructor or an ienumerable, and that is our items. So we can just pass in items. So this will pass back all of our work items that we have saved during this session from the mock service, but our actual service that we implement in a few episodes from now will query this, the back end and get just today's work items and then return it. So we can save here and now we can start fleshing out our summary page. So let's head over to the summary page. Right now, our summary page just has this label and we don't want just this label. So we're going to want to add a couple things to the summary page. So I'm going to delete this and make a couple comments. And the first thing we want is kind of the entire overview of this pay period. So this pay period overview. And then we might want a section about the, the next pay date. And then we also might want to display the, a history of the user's pay or so we can just say previous pay statements. And these will be the three sections we add. So we can place each of these in their own frame. So we'll use a frame and we can style it a little later. And then each frame needs its own child. So I'll just copy and paste beneath each of these comments that break out the sections. And then each of these will get their own header or title label. So let's go ahead and create a label. And this one's text will be current pay period estimate is fine. And then we'll have a date range, and this date range can be something about the current pay period. So we can make a label, and text will be bound to the page model. And so the page model will deal with calculating the pay range. Uh, but th what we can put here is uh, current pay date range is what we can call the variable. And then beneath that, we want to kind of show an estimate for how much they're going to be earning this pay period. So this can just be text and it can be binding current period earnings. And then we'll provide a string format, uh, just like we did previously to put it into a dollar amount. In our next frame, we just want to provide a title here so we can just say label. Text is something like payment date for this period. And then we'll do another label and its text will be bound to a calculation we do in the page model. And we can call this current period pay date. And then in our last frame that we we created, uh, this will be the previous pay statement. So we'll just make another label, which will be another title label. And this can be just pay statements. And then we'll want a list. So we can make a list view. Its item source can be bound to the page model. And we can just call it uh, statements. And then we could provide a simple data template for its item template. So we can say list view dot item template and then create a data template in here. And this will take in a view cell. That view cell will have a stack layout. And this will be a horizontal stack layout. So orientation will be horizontal. And then in here, we'll have two labels. So label one will be bound to the date. So text is binding, date is fine. And its horizontal options will be start and expand. And then we'll use another label. And its text will be bound to the dollar amount. So binding earnings. And its horizontal options don't matter because this will just push it all the way to the end but let's set it to end anyway. And that'll give us the basic outline of our summary page. Now we can go to the page model for our summary page and start adding some of these properties that we bound to. So let's head over to the summary page model and we need to make a couple properties. So the first one is this current pay date range, which is going to be text based on the statement start and end date. So this will just be a string. So we can just say prop string and then we'll just copy and paste the variable name that we used we also need current pay earnings this will be a double so we can just say prop make it a double and uh, paste the name in there then we'll head back to the page and look for the next one current pay period date now this one can actually be a date so we can provide a string format so let's do that so we can uh, provide a string format and our string format will just simply be MMMM, which will give you the full text for the month. And then we use a single, single digit day, so just a lowercase d, and then the four digit year. And this will provide some kind of a format to our current pay period date. So we need to copy this variable name, head back over to the page model and make that property. 
So this will now be a date time and we can paste in the variable name. The next variable we want to grab is or create is a observable collection or a regular list of statements. So we didn't haven't created those models yet, so we will here in a moment. But let's go ahead and create that list. So we can just say prop again, and this will be a list. And for now, we'll just say object. We'll name it statements. So we'll just paste in statements. Now, paste statement, the object itself hasn't been created. So let's go ahead and create a paste statement. So we'll head over to models and we'll add a new class. I'm going to name this class paste statement. And this is going to just model the data for a paste statement. So the information we need for a paste statement. So a paste statement needs a couple properties. Uh, the first one will be um, a payment start, so a date time, and we can just name it start. We also need an end, so public date time here and end. We'll want the actual payout date, so public date time date. And then we'll also want the amount, so that can be a double, and this will be amount. And then the last thing we should track is a list of associated work items. So we can just make a list, work item, and we can just call this work items. And then we can import the using. And then I'm going to add some comments so that it's easier to understand what these are. So the start is the pay period start date. The end is the pay period end date. Date, again, is the payout date for the pay period. So payout date for period. And then the amount is the payout amount. And work items, I think, is the most obvious one, but let's go ahead and provide a summary for it as well. This is a list of associated work items for the pay period. Okay, and now we can head back over to our summary page model, and we can start making these properties bindable so that they can notify the page when they get updated. So we need a private variation of each. And now when we get to statements, before we create its private variation, we're going to change object to pay statement and we'll import the using, and now we can create its private member. And now for each of these, we will follow the same pattern we've been using, so we'll get, get will return the private member, and set will use the set property method, referencing the private member, and pass in value. And so we'll do the same thing for each of these. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. So now we can create our constructor, so just public summary page model, and in here we're going to want to require some kind of service dependency that can give us all of our pay statement history as well as the current pay statement details. So we need to create a new service. So let's head over to services and create a new folder. We can name this folder statement and this will be our statement service. So let's add a new interface. We can call it I statement service. And then we'll also add a new class which will be the mock implementation. So just mock statement service. Make sure that class implements the I statement service. Let's save all and register the services into our page model locator. So heading into here under account service, we can just say container.register i statement service, import the using, and then register the mock statement service. Okay, with that registered, we can close the page model locator and we can head over to our statement service interface. And we know we want a couple things. We, based on our page model, we want our service to return statements, so it'll return a list of pay statement objects. And then we also want a way to call our service and get current pay period details. So first thing we'll do is add the service dependency into the constructor, so we can say I statement service, import the using, give it a name, and then we'll just cache it locally, so statement service equals statement service. And then when we use a quick fix to create this, I think it puts it in the wrong spot, so I'll cut it from here. I will paste it above the constructor, and we're good here. So now we can override the initialize async method, and in the initialize async method is where we can make a call to the statement service to get our statements. So let's make this an asynchronous method. Instead of returning based on initialize, we'll just await it. And then in here, we can just say statements equals await, and now we'll just await our statement service dot get statement history async. And now we don't have that method, so we can quick fix and it'll generate the method for us. That should give us a task with a result type of list of payment, pay statement objects, so that's perfect. And now if we head over to the mock statement service, we can quick fix and just implement the methods that it requires. And then in our mock service, we can just create some default pay statement history and then we'll just return it. So up here, we can just say private list of pay statement objects, 
and we can just call it items is fine. And then in the constructor, we can initialize it and we can add some items. So let's just add some default items of, so a pay statement. So we can just say the amount is uh, $10 for the first one. The payment date, we can just say is, you know, last Friday. So date time dot parse. And in here we can put our date string. So 06, 12, 2020. And we will say that that is the Friday after the pay period closes. So if our payment date is on the first Friday, after the close of our pay period, then our pay period start will be uh, date time dot parse. And this will just be 05, 24, 2020. And the end will just be the full two weeks after that. So that should end date time dot parse. And that'll be 06, 04, 2020. And that'll give us a two week range and a payout date of the following Friday. And then we can associate some work items so we can just make this a new list. And in this list, we can just provide some work items and they just need a start and an end. So anywhere in between these dates, we'll just add one item. It's one hour of work. They get paid $10 an hour. So that will come out to the $10 in the payments pay statement amount. Then the only thing we need to do from here is return that as the task results. So we can say task return task dot from result. And this will just return items. And now our mock service returns something for payment history. And that's where we'll end today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.